Hey guys, this is Andre. I'm a certified translator and a real estate concierge. And this is Minsk National Airport. Just dropped off some paperwork for the consulate. Just had an arrival of a good American guy. He's a nice, smart guy relocating to a hopefully nice place. And uh, today we'll have a quick uh, story about about what has to be done and what has uh, better not to be done as you are trying to get residency in Belarus if you're an American if you're taking a flight via Turkey not taking a bus from Vilnius that is and if you are not doing some of your homework I'll really really ask for some uh, feedback from the Americans out there at home to verify that some of the things that we believe work certain way don't work this way or the other way around and uh, thank you for watching the channel I hope the story will be more enjoyable than our yesterday midnight plus interaction with all sorts of, uh, uh, of people they're very nice people by the way here at the airport all sorts of uh, circles of these people let's see what happens so there is the only one option for an American to get a visa at home and by the way you don't have to apply at home country like Americans don't have to apply in America uh, it's uh, posting the papers to Washington that's the only consulate left out there and they're pretty nice amicable easy going email replying and everything but firstly the guy was busy selling out his stuff and secondly he could not get the pictures of the right size I'm pretty certain that all the other applicants before him somehow succeeded but maybe it wasn't convenient for his location for his town and everything to find 35 by 45 millimeter picture booth he didn't do it so last last resort was the airport uh, section on the second floor out there there's a photo booth that uh, does, takes pictures but that only takes Belarusian cash and that goes through the ATM and the ATMs are a bit tricky with a foreign card it may work it may it may not work so he decided to not take any pictures that was the first wrinkle we had the form filled and he had the form on telegram and he had all the instructions but somehow he didn't uh, print it out okay he was packing he was stressful he was everything but anyway he didn't have the form ready the visa form has to be ready printed out on both sides signed personally and that picture has to go on the top right side they only need one picture 35 by 45 millimeters we just fixed that thing but that was fun by the way you can try one of the free of charge apps or trial period apps uh, that exist for Android and iOS for, for doing that I just succeeded with photo room and the pictures were just just perfect if you want to do a selfie at home then just get it printed out on, a, on, on official paper filtering out the background that works secondly his Turkish Airlines arrival to Istanbul was a bit of a nightmare and that's an interesting investigation that's still awaiting us on arrival as I understand transit passengers who have their luggage checked through and we assume he checked his luggage through all the way to Belarus was not picked up by the airline and there's a big deal about which airline that had to be Belavia claimed uh, it had to be uh, the Turkish guys Turkish guys op uh, claimed the opposite obviously so there was a bit of bitching with the security of the airport because apparently in the transit zone they screen what kind of passengers try to filter through the gate and they also ask for some uh, for some visas basically and the american guy who flew here to apply for visa on arrival could not have a visa before he flew in that's the that's the thing so this is the first point like a crucial point when it's useful to have somebody useful here on this side and on top of that on your side because apparently the Turks who have a mechanism of calling here to the Minsk National Airport to consult that there is indeed a procedure for this guy and he has a copy of the invitation and he had an approved copy of the invitation by the way to apply once he's here so it's okay that he doesn't have a visa uh, there were issues with uh, charter flights by the way they frequently denied foreigners who didn't have visa even though the arrangement was here for them to apply an arrival and that's uh, that, that used to be a problem in the past I haven't heard of it lately so when he tried to get in there he obviously passed through the controls eventually the Turks didn't speak very good English I talked to the boss it seemed to help and uh, the paper with a stamp of the consulate as well 
So okay, he is in the transit zone. He has a 23-hour layover, and his cases with everything were left behind on the uh, uh, transportation belt outside at the departure, at, at the arrivals. So Bilavi, he isn't very helpful. The ticket office says, oh, "We're a ticket office. We don't have any guys like on the line in Turkey." Cheers. That was like evening, uh, Wednesday night. So today's Thursday. The uh, guy is in the uh, transit zone. He has his cash, which exceeds the, let's say, non-declarable limit, and he uh, needs to go out from the transit zone to collect his luggage because none of the airlines are helpful, no, not the security people at the airport are helpful. And here's the question to the audience. Guys, does it happen often that somewhere in Turkey at the layover uh, to a Minsk-bound flight you have some zero help from the personnel? Things are chaotic. Things are not helpful, people are not helpful. Does it seem like a trend to you? Or was it just a, a bad day for, for, a, for a good guy or something like this? So, okay, uh, he's uh, going through the transit uh, zone check-in again. And uh, he leaves his stuff behind so as not to clear with the customs and not get taxed on the cash that he has. And he cheerfully collects his luggage, but now they no longer allow him in again. For some reason, again, there was reasons after reasons, nothing clearly explained, a lot of important guys doing nothing. So he is struggling through that security place. Thank God he had Wi-Fi and a way to connect to him. I gave him airport contact phone and WhatsApp. Uh, it seems straightforward, but doesn't seem very helpful in his case. So all kinds of guys and everything were on that issue, but somehow they were saying, no, we can do nothing about it. So he doesn't know which uh, gate he is boarding at. Eventually they let him through and uh, one of the guys, he says, tore his ticket or uh, I think it was ticket, not the boarding pass. It was a ticket that was printed out probably. I'll, I'll, I'll check with uh, what kind of paper that was after all. But he seems to be a grown-up guy enough to tell the boarding pass from a ticket. So one of the check-in guys just tears it apart uh, in front of him. Then they fix the boss that uh, they, they knew from the first round of trying to get in and the boss clears him in. Now there's no like information about where the boarding is going to take place, like the section is big and there's like still 20 hours ahead of him for, for the waiting. So he relaxes out there with all the comforts and everything of the transit zone and the, the security guy is kept waking him up every couple of hours just to ask like who, who are you, what are you, what are you, what are you doing here, although he probably ended up naming them, knowing, him, knowing them all by the first names in the end. So then he boards the flight, it's slightly delayed and that's like half of the journey because once he arrives here there is uh, the second part of the story. So once the flight eventually lands, half hour later than planned, uh, the uh, procedures start, he goes to the second floor, goes to all that picture, oh I don't have the picture form, oh I don't have the form uh, routine. I was outside the customs, that's the second uh, reason, uh, the second time when somebody on your side is helpful to be by your side, even outside the customs. And the visa goes smoothly and he followed the direction in, directions in the video, I'll attach the video link in the description out there, US, US uh, applicants uh, getting a visa. And he goes to the passport control where of course some of my friends greet him and uh, uh, take, him, take him for an interview, of course, the information about this guy was uh, uh, submitted shortly before the arrival and they knew him, he, was, he would be coming, they knew what to ask, they knew what to, let's say, discuss and everything went smoothly. The guy who was interviewing showed up outside the gates and that's the third time when it's helpful to have somebody getting you in here if you are seriously relocating that is not sure if that qualifies for a tourist visit it's just a normally not so not so demanding a screening so we have a little conversation I say it's my client that's official that's serious and uh, he really wants to get another country and another chance uh, here in Belarus so then he goes to the customs I reminded him about the red channel several times and uh, apparently that worked, otherwise we wouldn't get there even at 2 a.m., which we eventually did. So customs let him through and eventually we were on the way and somehow there were no surprises on the road to the hotel. So now the next steps are pretty much under control. 
will handle the notarized passport translation. It's ready already. We just have to pop into the notary office and start our property search thing and basically get the new life kick started. Tell me what you think, guys. Thank you for any input, any practical experiences about that Istanbul layover. Would be very helpful. Uh, thanks for following the channel. Any comments, any likes, any dislikes are most welcome down below there. And hope to see you in Minsk someday. The expat meeting is on Sunday. Follow the channel or check the video description for the timetable. And hopefully see you soon in Minsk. Cheers!